Hello there, I'm Muse and this is Tech Deals. Want some award winning games you don't need a graphics card to play? Recently I've looked back at some retro consoles from the 8 and 16 bit era. Today I'm going to continue that trend by taking a look at the At Games Atari Flashback X Deluxe Edition, the newest in their Atari Flashback line and a mini version of the original Atari 2600. And I'm going to compare it to the Atari Flashback 9 Gold a previous version and a mini version of the Darth Vader edition Atari 2600. This is a gem from the 8-bit era credited for popularizing storing games on swappable ROM cartridges. Hugely popular Space Invaders released for the console in 1980, launching it into success. But in the end, Atari's run was cut short by rough marketing, overproduction, and low quality third party and first party releases. But let's look at some great games from its time and see if this mini system does it justice. Today's video is brought to you by Backblaze, the leader in online backup services. Get a free two week trial with no credit card required using our link in the video description. More details after the video. Please keep in mind that information I share here is in relation to the US where I grew up and live unless otherwise stated. While Atari had been successful with arcade games, they were expensive to develop and short lived. So they decided to pursue the development of a home system. The Atari Video Computer System VCS released in 1977 and was renamed to the Atari 2600 in 82. It originally came with two joystick controllers, AKA joy cons, a conjoined pair of paddle controllers and the combat game cartridge later replaced by Pac-Man. The paddle controllers do not come with these, but they can be purchased separately online. Without further ado, on to the systems at hand. The Atari Flashback 9 Gold has been discontinued but can still be found at a reasonable price online and the X Deluxe is still being produced. The 9 Gold box includes the console, 120 built-in games, two wireless Joy-Cons, one HDMI cable, one micro USB power adapter, and a manual. The X Deluxe box includes the console, 120 built-in games, two wired Joy-Cons, one micro USB power adapter, and a manual. Let's break that down, shall we? Starting with the consoles. The X Deluxe wins in looks by a landslide for mimicking the look of the original Atari VCS much more closely, and it's way tinier. The controls, the ports, the wood panel, it's all much better looking. But if you don't mind it a touch bigger and liked the look of the Darth Vader version of the Atari 2600 released in 1982, then maybe the nine gold is more your style. But I have to warn you about the line where they started to try to make it look like wood and really just made it look like a bad brown paint that had been keyed like a car. Now they each have 120 games built in, but five of them are exclusive to one or the other respectively. The nine gold has Atari Video Cube, Freeway, Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns, Strip Off, and Track and Field, while the X Deluxe has Fishing Derby, Marine Wars, Oink, Strategy X, and Super Cobra. As for the controllers, they are very similar, but the 9 Gold includes wireless controllers while the X Deluxe includes wired controllers. I would choose based on the system since the controllers can be purchased separately online. The X Deluxe does not include an HDMI cable while the 9 Gold does, but I imagine you probably have plenty of HDMI cables just laying around. And they both included the respective micro USB power adapter and manual. Now let's dive into some of the included games gameplay. Included on the 9 Gold Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns is a platformer released by Activision for the Atari 2600 in 1984 that added vertical scrolling and balloon travel. It was one of the last big releases for the console and one of the most technically impressive, offering better visuals and four channel music instead of the previous two. You no longer die per se in this one and there is no time limit. If you die, you lose points and are returned to your most recent checkpoint, which looks a lot like a health symbol on the ground. This is also where you meet Quick Claw, his cowardly pet mountain lion, and Rhonda, his niece. You rescue them and find a diamond ring to win. It was named number one in the best 25 Atari 2600 games of all time in issue 46 of Retro Gamer Magazine. 
Included in the X Deluxe, Fishing Derby is an early simulation game released by Activision for the Atari 2600 in 1980. You can play single player or multiplayer, which can get quite competitive, but gameplay is the same either way. You just go from playing against an NPC to playing against another person. The goal of the game is to reel in 99 pounds of fish. The line is automatically cast and reeled in, but you can use the joystick to move it left, right, up, and down as the heavier fish are at the bottom and there is a shark waiting at the top to steal your catch if you aren't careful. It was overall recommended as a great family game. I myself enjoyed more playing against someone than the NPC. The NPC is really good. Um, I don't know if that's an amazing game mechanic. There aren't even levels to it. He doesn't suddenly get harder. He just starts out insanely difficult to beat. Using the consoles and their respective controllers that came with them, I'm not sure if it's the console or the controllers that were working better, but I have ranked the following games that are on both systems for which one they played better on. But again, it could have been the system and it could have been the controller. Emulated better on the 9 Gold, Enduro is a racing game released by Activision for the Atari 2600 in 1983. You play as a spider, <coughs> I mean racer, tasked with racing in the National Enduro, a multi-day endurance race. It offers, very new at the time, day and night cycles, weather cycles, and visibility adjustments. While increasing in difficulty each day, a player can race forever, but the track will reset and start again from zero when you hit 999,999 kilometers. Needless to say, I did not get that far. And emulated virtually the same on both systems, Missile Command is a ballistic missile simulation game released by Atari for the Atari 2600 in 1981, selling over 2.5 million copies. It was repopularized in the later film War Games, where a gamer accidentally almost started World War III thinking he was playing an innocent game, but he had actually hacked into the US nuclear arsenal computer system. In the game, you are being attacked by ballistic missiles and have to target them to take them out before any land, hitting the six cities you are protecting. You have to finish the level with at least three cities to continue to the next level and earn extra points for additional cities saved and missiles not used. As you move through the levels, new missiles are introduced along with new weapons to take them out. This is another game intended to be played until you are inevitably wiped out, but there are few who have made it far enough to loop the game back to the beginning. To achieve this, you have to accrue 810,000 points, awarding you 176 cities and bonus cities from there on, making it possible to play for hours on end. Emulated better on the 9 Gold, Frogger is a top-down platformer released by Parker Brothers for the Atari 2600 in 1982 and was widely received as one of the greatest video games ever made. I have to say it did hold up really well, not to mention it was the first game I ever owned myself. I got it on a floppy disk in a Sonic drive-up Happy Meal when I was around 8 years old. Pretty sure it's in my hope chest. <laughs> The objective needs no introduction or explanation, but did you know it also gained recognition as the arcade game with the most ways to die? That's right, Frogger set records at that time because you could die from being hit by or running into a road vehicle, jumping into the river, running into snakes, otters, or an alligator's jaws in the river, jumping into a home invaded by an alligator, staying on top of a diving turtle until it has completely submerged, riding a log, alligator, or turtle off of the side of the screen, jumping into a home already occupied by a frog, jumping into the side of a home or the bush, or just running out of time. The highest score achievable is 99,990 points because the game can only keep the last five digits if you exceed that. Obviously, I didn't hit that goal either. Emulated virtually the same on both systems, Space Invaders is an early shooting game that set the template for future shoot-'em-ups, released by Taito for the Atari 2600 in 1980. It drew inspiration from the previous Atari arcade game Breakout and midway game Gunfight, as well as the War of the Worlds, Space Battleship Yamato, and Star Wars. Few have gone without crossing paths with this, or some variation of it since it led to Galaxian and Galaga, but Space Invaders' original title was actually Space Monsters due to a popular song in Japan at the time called Monster. Tomohiro Nishikado, the creator, said the biggest task when putting Space Invaders together was the hardware needed to run it. That's right, this game in particular actually led to the creation of the platforms it originally ran on, since the microcomputers in Japan were not powerful enough yet to handle the tasks in designing and programming it. This led to the first game that used the Intel 8080 CPU, displayed raster graphics on a CRT monitor using a bitmapped frame buffer, 
and use Mineral Sound, hosted by a combination of analog circuitry and a Texas Instruments SN76477 sound chip. The art on the original arcade cabinets did not and does not match the game at all because it was based on the original title Space Monsters. The cabinets themselves were constructed in a way that actually provided the in-game background and colors, using a static painting of a starry sky with a moon mounted on it, and strips of cellophane across a translucent surface that the game screen was mirror projected onto. I still find that design really awesome. Might set up one of my own, maybe in my new place. River Raid is a top-down vertical scrolling shooter released by Activision for the Atari 2600 in 1982. You man a fighter jet behind enemy lines over the river of no return in a raid. You can keep going forever as long as you avoid damage or running out of fuel. That I did not. The objective is to take out the enemies, but you have to watch to make sure you don't accidentally take out fuel stations and you fly over them to refuel. You can move side to side or decelerate or accelerate, but there is no up and down while the game is auto-scrolling, progressing you forward. Also, the banks can kill you. You can run into the sides of the screen and die. So along with all of the other things happening, just the map itself will kill you. Due to the destructive content, it was the first video game to get banned for minors in West Germany. Unfortunately, one game I really wanted to play, Tapper, was not included on either system, but you can add it via the SD card slot for the 9 Gold, or a flash drive and OTG adapter for the X Deluxe. Some of these games actually held up really well, like Space Invaders and Frogger. I could definitely play those more. But others had that classic game difficulty that makes me grind my teeth. While we could play these games and talk about them forever, it's time to sum up these systems. I personally feel that whether you are getting it as a devoted collector or a nostalgia chip through games of your grand past, the X Deluxe is a better buy between the two. It looks far better, takes up less space, and doesn't consume batteries. You know, the wireless controllers, they take batteries. That being said, Atari has released a new system of their own with over a hundred classics on it, a classic style Joy-Con, a more Xbox looking controller, and the system doubles as a mini PC. The 2021 Atari VCS will run you about 400 USD. If it offered all I needed out of a PC, I'd say it's totally worth it. But if I myself wanted an Atari 2600 system, I'd get an X Deluxe and add all the games to it. While I did say some of the games were better on the 9 Gold, I'm fairly certain that was due to the controllers. It was just, it was very hard to connect if I'm honest, um, but it was a lot more responsive than the wired controllers. I have no idea why, but there were some times when the shoot button did not actually do anything when I was playing with the wired controller, whereas the wireless controller did respond. Um, so I really think it's just due to the controller. So I would just buy other controllers for the X Deluxe and see if that makes the gameplay better because everything else about it is a lot better. Of course, you can always get a Raspberry Pi to emulate all of these if you just want to play the games again. But the mini console is a great nostalgic collector's item that looks just like the old system and controllers, right down to the connections and ports. That's right, this is compatible with the classic controllers and the controllers you get with it are virtually the classic controllers. They even come out of the box a little uh, linty, like not clean. I guess this rubber really attracts everything and maybe there was some dust in the box. Interesting, kind of makes me wonder if they pulled it out of some overstock, <laughs> but there you have it. So it looks just like the classic controllers and system. The X Deluxe is currently going for about $100 on Amazon and eBay via the links in the video description. Please remember, using them, even if you aren't buying this product, benefits our channel at no additional cost to you. Like this video if you like it, give it a share, subscribe if you haven't, click the bell so you don't miss out on future content, comments, thoughts, feedback, and suggestions, hit me with your best shot down below. Thank you so much for watching, have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time. Backblaze is the leader in online backup services. Backup everything on your computer, including external USB hard drives for just $6 per month with no limits. No file size limits, no backup size limits, no throttling, and multi-threaded upload support. Multiple security options, including two-factor authentication and private encryption keys. Rapid restore with file downloads, plus the option to have your data shipped to you via USB hard drive.
File version support keeps multiple copies of files as you change them to allow recovery of older files or accidentally deleted files with the option to keep locally deleted files in your backup forever. Sign up for a free two-week trial using our link in the video description below. No credit card is required. Give it a try to test your backup speed. Do a test restore to make sure you're happy with it before you pay anything. Tech and Rogue have been paying customers of Backblaze for nine years, long before they had a YouTube channel and were highly recommending it.